film you are about to see was produced as a personal message from the people of Australia to the people of Britain to show aspects of our war effort and our wholehearted devotion to the Empire's cause. It is now presented to you because what has been accomplished will fill us with a sense of real pride. And what is more important, will create in every man and woman a desire to do more and still more. Australia marches with Britain, from her fighting men to her army and overalls. Land of plenty, land of wide horizons that stretch to the rim of the world, land of untold resources, all placed gladly, willingly, at the feet of Mother England. Millions of acres of wheat country produce more food than a comparatively small population can possibly consume. And so the surplus of huge proportions flows in a golden, life-giving tide to the people of beleaguered Britain and gets there despite the worst the sinister forces of aggression can accomplish. Australia's wheat industry is thoroughly mechanized and the average yield is 180 million bushels of some of the best wheat produced in the world. The weaving, restless cattle streaming down the mountainside. On sunlit uplands of the rich coastal belt, on the far-flung plains back or beyond, through the verdant grasslands of the semi-tropical north, millions of fat cattle roam. Food on the hoof, beef to be. Vital ammunition in the giant game of war. The roast beef of old England. He sees the vision splendid of the sunlit plains extended. Sheep, 100 million strong, a peaceful army serving the cause of mankind, offering him food, offering him warmth. The battle dress of fighting men is made of Australian wool. Pure Merino, the deep, rich fleets of an aristocrat, the magnificent result of more than a century of careful breeding. Wool blankets the world, helps to win wars and the greatest wool-producing nation in the world backs Britain to the last man, the last chilling, the last sheep. There's a hundred thousand to be shorn. Several Australian stations muster that many each year. But numbers don't worry these iron-backed boys. Ringers, the super speed men, can on occasion reduce 300 sheep to comparative nudity in a working day. The Australian record is 370. Rapidly, the pieces are taken to the skirting room and then on to the wool classer. Got a load off their minds and quite elated about it. Australia, like the rest of the civilized world, has always believed in a policy of butter before guns. Now she produces both. In the dairy belt is again an industry which produces far more than the country needs and thus has a large export surplus of butter and cheese for Britain. Rich creamy milk from tested and rigorously government supervised herds. In no time it's separated and becomes cheese or butter. Mountains of vitamins going forward in the refrigeration chambers of ships that are bound north. Britain has an empire, the food resources of which can never be dried up. Our enemies are in an entirely opposite position. Incubators are working overtime to produce fowls, to produce eggs, to produce more fowls, which are also apparently working overtime. And so millions of breakfasts are collected every day. 
Machine washed in the huge organization of the egg marketing board, graded, tested, and packed for export. Mmm, too bad eggs. They won't reach England. Timber plays just as vital a part in war as it does in peace. The nation produces the toughest and best hardwoods in the world. Railway sleepers, mine and air raid shelter support, and 101 other wartime uses there are for cut and dressed lengths of these forest giants. Old methods still buy with the new. Thousands of men toil to turn it to the service of humanity and the winning of this war. While Britain rules the sea, she cannot starve. Australia is an inexhaustible treasure house of food and clothing. War has brought a supreme effort from all sections of the people, but none are rendering more valuable service than the primary producers, sending sorely needed wheat, flour, wool, butter, cheese, eggs, meat, dried and canned fruits, hides to the people of England who by their courage and tenacity have won the undying admiration and everlasting respect of the Australian people. Industry marches on. A great primary producing country has become a highly industrialized nation. Beneath the soil of the continent lie millions of tons of iron, lead, copper, bauxite and a score of minerals. Australia produces her own steel, exports it to steel making England. Thousands of Andersons that shelter Britons from the fiendishness of Hun attack were made in Australia. Giant presses turn out tin hats for the fighting men overseas and for others who need them in various fields of action. Gas masks emerge in huge quantities from factories. We may never need them, but there are others who may. We fight a vicious, ruthless enemy, and Australia strives wholeheartedly to help those less fortunately placed than herself. The army in overalls marches steadfastly with Britain. Every rivet driven home, every bolt wrenched to its place, is a nail in the coffin of totalitarianism. Right round Australia, furnaces blaze, men sweat. White hot metal scorches up the epitaphs of the destroyers of freedom. For molten metal turns to engines of war. Bren gun carriers made in Australia. And of a quality and efficiency that has won the unstinted praise of the British Army. Alongside which they operated in Libya and Greece. made in Australia are nightly flung at the Nazi sky raiders over London. Australian made munitions helped destroy the Italian army in the first Libyan campaign, have blasted the German hordes and sank the Bartolomeo Colleoni in the Mediterranean. The Australian Navy uses Australian made munitions almost exclusively. The population of the Commonwealth is 97% British, possibly a higher ratio than that of Britain itself. They're as British here as we are at all. And they're behind you to a mark. Shells. Shells for the Empire's armies. Winged messengers that bring bad news to the forces of darkness. In many fields, Australian munition production has increased 20 times since the war began. These are the frontline soldiers of the home front. More vital in this war than any previously. For this is not so much a war of fighting men as of fighting machines. Australian made, every one of them, a splendid tribute to the amazing upward surge of industrialization in the Commonwealth. Teeth for the tigers of the air. When a Royal Australian Air Force pilot presses the button with an enemy in his sights, he lets loose a stream of lead that probably began life mixed with the silver beneath fabulously rich broken hills. Today, Bren guns are produced in their entirety. 
Accuracy to one ten thousandth part of an inch is demanded. The body of the Bren in one piece weighing six pounds was cut from a 27 pound block of steel. Barrels are tested by eagle eyes for possible blemishes. Finished Brens ready for action and rolling off the production lines in hundreds. Vickers guns too are produced in quantity while the same huge mild square factory puts into the hands of every Australian infantryman his Lee Enfield rifle. The giant wheels of industry whir under the terrific impetus of conflict. And the aircraft guns flowing from a great plant, the production capacity of which increases with every passing week. They are assembling a gypsy moth engine, entirely made in Australia for an Australian built trainer plane. What was an incredible dream a few years ago is an established fact today. Aeroplanes down to the last nut and bolt are being mass produced in the Commonwealth. The Pratt & Whitney radial engine is a remarkably intricate piece of precision engineering, yet a great factory has them in mass production from the nation's own raw materials. They power the Australian-built Wiraway fighter bomber. Wiraways fly above the jungles of Malaya with Australian pilots at the controls. They wing over the continent, watchful, ready for instant action. Trainer planes, fighter planes, and soon, within a few weeks, splendid Beaufort bombers. The army in overalls works tirelessly and gets results. The nation has gone to war with a vengeance. Securing from us without love. Australia has 12,000 miles of coastline. She must develop as a maritime nation as Britain did. And she's laying the keels today. In a dozen shipyards, men toil to send down the slipways, ship after ship, from destroyers and corvettes to wooden coasters and great steel liners. Ships, aeroplanes, guns, munitions, food. Every ounce that can be spared goes to the far-flung empire. In great modern cities, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth, in the vast open spaces, the civilian army toils incessantly for the defeat of the Hun. While her empire lives, Britain will not fight alone. Australia marches with Britain. She gives to Mother England not only her wealth, her industry, her vast resources, she gives her sons. She gives her ships. A small navy in point of numbers, but game and efficient. Eagerly seeking to give battle in the name of all that decent men and women hold dear. The Empire air training scene sweeps on, magnificently successful. Young eagles of the Royal Australian Air Force, many of whom have already won distinction in aerial combat abroad. Today, the force is a vital fighting machine, alert, well trained. Well equipped, fly on, young eagles, to victory. The volunteer army, the democratic army, hard-fighting sons of Anzac fathers. From beside the plough, from the factories, from the mines, they come in their hundreds of thousands. Free men going out to fight, to die perhaps, that freedom may live. A civilian army, raw at first, but splendid material from which is shaped fighting men. Swinging along the road to victory. It may be hard and it may be long, but it is the road to victory. They fight to defend a glorious heritage. The Anzac army is on the march. A surging khaki tide comes out of the south and flows up the world. Blood in the arteries of empire, they go to build a brave new world on the wreckage of despotism. Keep your chin up, England. Australia will be there. 
Britain has an empire that will not fail her, peopled with men and women who love liberty, in whom the light of courage and endurance burns fiercely, and will forever. And so we send our sons, flower of our manhood, that all that we love may endure. Whatever the future may bring, however hard the road, there will be no falter in the abiding face of Australia in one united people. One all-embracing flag. One gracious majesty. God save the King.